The land is cleared for Hinkley C. We're now just hours away from finding out if Somerset's new reactor will be built. And if it gets the go-ahead, could it look like this? We cross the channel to find out. All the signs are that the Energy Secretary will announce planning consent for Hinkley C in Somerset, the first new nuclear power station to be built in this country for more than 20 years. And yet, it doesn't necessarily mean the station will be built. Well, our Somerset correspondent, Clinton Rogers, is outside Hinkley Point to explain more. H Clinton, why this uncertainty then? So it is complex. I have to say there are already two nuclear power stations here at Hinkley Point. Hinkley B behind me, which you can see, which is still generating electricity, but which has passed its sell-by date and has had its life extended. There's also Hinkley A, which has now stopped generating and is being decommissioned. So you might think common sense to build Hinkley C here. And as you say, the government will make that announcement tomorrow. Frankly, no one is expecting it to be anything other than a yes. Now, the French company behind this, EDF, have spent the best part of 18 months preparing this vast site in readiness for this announcement. It is huge, isn't it? Just take a look at it. But even if it gets its planning consent, that doesn't mean that it's a done deal because the other obstacle to overcome is a financial one. How much money the government is prepared to pay EDF for its nuclear electricity? It's a deal that should have been sorted by now, but it hasn't been. They are still arguing. And some people are concerned that might make EDF walk away. Among them, the leader of the local council who spoke to me earlier today. I'm saying make sure this project goes ahead because if it does not go ahead nationally the new nuclear program will come crashing down and secondly the economy of this area which we hope will move ahead will simply stagnate or go backwards. Well I have to say there is an element of brinkmanship here maybe it's two sides looking at one another seeing who blinks first but there is genuine concern that that deal has to be struck and struck soon and I have to say one other thing EDF is so cautious about it that they've actually stopped work on that construction site we saw earlier until such time as they do get that deal. Now I've mentioned already that EDF is a French company it's had decades of experience of building nuclear power stations and it spent the last six years constructing one in Flamonville which is on the Cherbourg Peninsula. It's going to be similar to the one that they hope to build here Hinkley C. So we decided to send our reporter Dickon Hooper and cameraman Jez Toogood over to uh, Flamonville to take a look and see what might be coming to Somerset. I have to say what they reckoned without was the worst snowstorm to hit that part of France for 25 years. Like Hinkley, Flamanville is off the beaten track. Getting there was impossible. This is a main road. We got stuck and spent a night in the van. We were headed here to see the new reactor that's being built. The same type is planned for Somerset. When we did get moving, we made it as far as Cherbourg, unlike some. I wanted to know if locals here felt they benefited from the work at nearby Flamanville. Oui, tout à fait, oui. Les entreprises locales ont... Yes, absolutely. Local businesses got work to build parts of the reactor. They took people on to do this, as did the big subcontractors. People who came to work need rooms, they eat and drink. Some brought their families. It brought benefits. About two and a half thousand people are building the reactor, spending in these bars and cafes. The Chamber of Commerce reciprocates by investing in infrastructure and local services. Que serait la région si il n'y avait pas le nucléaire dans la région? What would the region be without nuclear power? This region has shipbuilding and nuclear. It doesn't have other resources. There's an impact in terms of jobs an impact of people spending money and an impact in terms of training. Training brings the level of qualifications up in the region generally and helps our competitiveness against other regions. But there is opposition. The man who leads the main group was snowed in, so I spoke to him on the phone. His message to the people of Somerset was clear. Get ready for a lot of disruption on the roads. There's an awful lot of material that has to be brought in to build a power station. He also said that building Flamonville hadn't helped with employment here.
because a lot of workers from outside the area had been brought in. Quand vous avez un tel chantier à réaliser, when you have to build such a reactor, you won't find qualified people straight away in the region. For example, there were five people available here in the region to drive the big cranes. We needed 94. You have to bring people in to build the reactor quickly. As many here see it, the benefits of having a nuclear power station in Normandy outweigh the problems. And that's a message I'm sure EDF will be taking to Somerset. Dick and Hooper, BBC Points West, Cherbourg. So a glimpse of what might be coming, might be coming to Somerset sometime soon. If those obstacles we mentioned can be overcome, the first of them, the planning consent. And as we say, the government will be announcing that sometime tomorrow. We're expecting the announcement in the morning. Points West will be live here at Hinkley Point tomorrow lunchtime and in our programme at 6.30 tomorrow. So join us then. Clinton, for now, thank you very much. So why is the government even considering a nuclear future? when other countries, such as Germany, are moving away from it. Well, Malcolm Grimston is an author and academic on nuclear power, and he's in our Westminster studios now. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Now, regarding the energy supplies, how serious is the situation to us running out? Well, we have an awful lot of power plants coming to the end of their lives. The older nuclear stations, including Hinkley Point B, uh, are likely to come to the end of their lives in the next 10 years. We're going to lose a lot of our coal-fired uh, electricity capacity this decade because of European legislation about pollution. So we need to build something very significant uh, uh, very quickly. Some of it will be renewables, although increasingly we're recognising that the intermittency of the renewables, the fact that the wind doesn't blow when you want your electricity uh, is, uh, necessarily, is a real problem. Uh, but if we're not to become entirely dependent on imported gas with uh, Mr Putin or or Mr Ahmadinejad uh, deciding whether we should run our industries, keep our hospitals going or so on, then replacing our nuclear stations with new nuclear stations does seem to be a good idea. So, I mean, what, what about other countries like Germany who are rejecting it? What, I mean, what are they going to do now? Well, Germany is an exception. Uh, if we look around Europe, countries like the Czech Republic, uh, Poland, uh, very vigorously developing their nuclear programmes, no talk in Scandinavia of, of, of pulling back from nuclear at all. Germany's always had an odd relationship with, with nuclear nuclear power because of its position with respect to nuclear weapons uh, imposed on it in the 1960s. Germany is hoping uh, at the cost of about a trillion uh, euros, in other words a cost about the same as the whole of the UK national debt, that they'll be able to develop uh, renewable sources and import enough electricity from their neighbours when the wind isn't blowing uh, Mr. to Mr. keep Grimson. their lights on. But they're also building an awful lot of new coal-powered stations. Mr Grimson, very quickly, just, just to interrupt you there, let's bring it back to this country. I mean, as regards to nuclear power, have the government made their decision too late? Um, not too late. I think if we do begin building nuclear stations like Hinkley now, we can replace the uh, second generation plants like Hinkley B in an orderly fashion, but it is getting very tight time-wise. Mr Grimston, thank you very much for joining us. OK, well, let's bring all of this together with Dave Harvey. Dave, two huge decisions that we've got making a big impact, not just on the West Country, but the UK as well. So today, the future of flying, tomorrow, the future of energy. Oh, busy old news week <laughs> in the West Country, isn't it? Um, and, you know, huge numbers, a billion pounds for export today and some 14 billion pounds for that deal if it happens in Hinkley tomorrow and on a Wednesday. George Osborne will stand up and try and say what, if anything, he can do to kickstart the British economy, to get manufacturing and exporting going, and what he can do for builders. You can see why he thinks these two stories are really quite mm. important. Neither of them, though, are not without controversy. And in both cases, particularly Hinkley, lots of I's to be dotted and hurdles to be jumped, if I can mix my yeah. metaphors like that. Not a done deal at all. We'll be all over it tomorrow. Um, you can follow it if you like Twitter on our Twitter feed. I know you like a bit of that. So yeah. we'll be tweeting down from Hinkley, Clinton and I. Um, that'll be on the Points West Twitter feed. And of course, here on the telly as well. Yeah, we are going to be all over it. And I'm Absolutely. sure we'll get a lot of reaction as well, Dave. Thank Brilliant, you Dave. very much. Thank you very much.